Hello and welcome to Arcadia. With Halloween around the corner, many of you probably have a spooky D&D one-shot lined up, perhaps even the beginning of a scary campaign. I'd say it's too late for me to provide ideas for those, but what I can do is give you 5 easy tips that you can implement tonight to make any D&D session scarier. Stay until the end of the video and I'll even share an extra one that you probably are already expecting, but don't really want to hear. Telling a story, or in this case, running a game capable of scaring someone, is not an easy feat. Horror stories alongside comedy are one of the most challenging styles to pull off. This is because you're not just trying to pull some heartstrings or make the audience identify with the story. Not that those aren't challenging as well. In horror, you're trying to trigger not only a psychological response in your audience, but a biological one as well. You want to trigger the sympathetic nervous system, provoking a disproportionate relief of epinephrine that causes the audience's whole body to go into survival mode. And that's easier said than done when you're sitting in a modern-day living room eating pizza and playing with plastic miniatures. This is where the famous voluntary suspension of disbelief is more challenging to achieve than ever. Although, because it's a biological function hard-coded into our DNA, there are also some tricks we can exploit to make it happen more easily. Tip number one. Make it about terror, not horror. These two are very different, so much that I'll make a video completely dedicated to this issue someday. Look for it in the eye up there or down below in the underdark in case it's already out. For now, to make it quick, here's the difference. Horror is a response to the immediate danger, a jump scare, to put it simply. It is an effective way to trigger a fight or flight response, but it's also a bit cheap. You want to go beyond that. You want Terror, which, unlike horror, is a persistent feeling of fear. The dread of knowing something frightening can be, or is, about to happen, but not knowing when. Horror is about shock value, which is potent, but also ephemeral. Besides, when used constantly, it loses weight and its victims slowly become desensitized. Terror, however, stays with you and potentiates the scariest moments by building anticipation. In other words, terror can boost and lead to horror, but the opposite is not true. Use both, but make terror your main focus. Tip number two, less is more when it comes to gore. DMs and writers often fall down the common pitfall trap of describing horror scenes with extreme gore. Decapitated heads, cascades of flowing blood, ripped off limbs. It is, after all, what we're used to see in pop culture. However, this imagery, while vivid, is not as evocative as it often seems. After all, none of your players has ever seen a decapitated head or a limb being cut off. I hope. Because it's something so otherworldly to their life experience, it can be perceived as a more distant and unrealistic danger, and therefore less likely to feel as scary, dangerous, or even gross. When describing gory scenes, don't underestimate smaller injuries that may feel more plausible and therefore scarier to your players. A thumb being pulled backwards until it breaks, a knife slowly being inserted underneath a fingernail, a claw entering through the nostril and pulling it out until it rips the ala. Did this gross you out more than my previous injury descriptions? Your players may also feel that way. As a side note, don't underplay the gross stuff as well. It's an undeniable part of the horror genre. Stephen King once said, I try to terrorize the reader. If I can't, I try to horrify, and if I find I can't, I'll go for the gross out. Tip number three, terror lies in the unknown, but buildup is everything. Humans are naturally scared of the unknown, which is why terror is so powerful. Refrain from explaining the monsters or the curse or the scary stuff in your game too much, as that may demystify it and diminish its power. Your players will be more scared of threats they don't fully understand. However, this doesn't mean you should tell your players nothing. Be mindful that terror comes from the anticipation of something frightening, so while you shouldn't unveil every scientific detail about your monster or your menace to your players, show them how much of a threat it is in order to inspire terror. In other words, don't let them understand, but allow them to perceive. Don't tell them the enemy is a hag, but let them know that in nights of full moon the children roam into the forest never to return. Don't tell them there is a vampiric mist preying on the villagers, but show them a corpse sucked dry out of blood. Don't start the battle against a werewolf with roll initiative while the enemy is within eyesight, but describe instead the howls getting closer, the smell of blood intensifying, and the rustling of bushes in multiple directions, making it impossible to determine where the beast is coming from or will attack from. 
Unless, is it, is it more than one? Allowing the player's imagination to run wild like this is an added benefit of this technique, since they will likely imagine the scene in much scarier ways than you'd ever be able to convey through words. Tip number four, use the environment to your advantage. As I stated before, it's hard to feel true terror sitting in a well-lit living room while eating pizza and playing with plastic miniatures. A little effort into changing the environment into a creepier atmosphere will go a long way into helping you achieve higher and more real levels of horror. The easiest way to do this is by dimming the lights, banning cell phones from the table, and preparing a spooky playlist beforehand to set the mood. Music is such a powerful tool to leverage certain feelings in role-playing games, I hardly ever run D&D without my trustworthy playlist anymore. If you want to go the extra mile, you can turn off the lights and let the whole session be played by candlelight. Creepy decorations and physical props can go a long way too. You may even go all the way and get a fog machine for the session. Tip number five, and this is a vital one, make sure that you have player buy-in. This is paramount to ensure your hard efforts don't go down the drain with a silly joke mid-session. If your goal is to truly scare your players, and your players really want to be scared and not just play a silly Halloween-themed game, make sure everyone's on board with the theme so that everyone respects some ground rules and takes the game seriously. Nothing can deflate carefully built-up terror more quickly than a joke. And if you think that inviting your players for a scary Halloween one-shot is indicative enough that it's going to be horror-themed and they shouldn't do that, think again. Not only a creepy D&D game can mean lots of things, even in horror movies the amount of comic relief varies greatly, but making jokes is actually instinctual to humans when they're feeling nervous or frightened. It's a protective mechanism intended to diffuse the tension when the person feels uncomfortable. Make sure everyone is on the same boat regarding that, so that the enjoyment of a truly scary D&D game is not jeopardized by a nervous crack at humor. And those are five quick tips that can help you make your game scarier tonight. It's a short list, but I wanted to make it as easy and practical to use as possible. And yes, I did mention a fog machine at some point, but maybe you can save that one for next year. Just dim the lights and play some creepy soundtracks and you'll be fine. But before you go, let me give you a final bonus tip. Are you sure you want to play D&D? Don't get me wrong, it's perfectly possible to run an awesome scary game in D&D. However, that is not the main intention behind the game's design. And just like you can totally play basketball with a volleyball, but it will never be as good as with a basketball, there are other tabletop RPGs that are much better suited to run horror genre games than D&D. For example, Dread is very easy to understand, and the Jenga Tower mechanic really steers into the cumulative, nerve-wracking feeling you want to stimulate in a horror game. If you're feeling more fatalist or even contemplative, Ten Candles is also an interesting choice that uses candles slowly being snuffed out as a game mechanic until the whole room is immersed in darkness. And there are many other options if you're willing to learn a larger amount of rules. Vampire the Masquerade, Call of Cthulhu, Alien… I'm not trying to convince you not to play D&D at Halloween, but just be mindful that there are many other games out there, some of which may fit your needs better than D&D. I hope this was useful to you. If you want to keep listening to my DM tips, I suggest you take a look at this video, where I take some D&D advice from Subnautica, a game which I think excels at employing terror instead of horror. You can also check this other one, which YouTube thought was appropriate. I wish you all the best for your scary D&D games. Don't forget to let me know in the comments how it went. Thanks for watching. I'm the first Arcadian, and I'll stop wearing black when they make a darker color.